While we were at the NBAA Forum here at Westchester County Airport, just outside New York City, we decided to speak to people in the front lines of the business aviation industry. Executives from a cross-section of companies trying to make their living in a challenging market. And here's what they had to tell us. This year has been an interesting one, especially compared to last year. Uh, I, I think as we finished up 2015, especially in November, December, we had real strong months uh, from a fuel sales perspective. And then, um, ironically, in January, it was actually a little flat uh, to, to down even. And then over the summers, things kind of started to level, level out a little bit. And uh, so, you know, like any year, we expect October through December to, to be pretty strong. And I think the thing that we were surprised to see was a lot of the, the owner-operator types that are out there, the light, light jets, who, who are typically influenced by fuel price and what they can and can't do with respect to hours that they fly per year. Um, we thought we might see a, a little bit of an increase from that demographic. Uh, it just hasn't been there. A little bit of a slow start to Q1. Definitely a soft market. I think a lot of trepidation as far as what was happening with Europe and the Euro and uh, all the talks about Brexit and people just more psychologically and emotionally on the nervous side. I don't think it's a lack of money on any account as far as corporate flight departments, corporate aviation, companies flying. I don't think it's a lack of money in terms of private, avi uh, private flyers for aviation. But um, I think just more of a psychological and emotional trend for the first quarter. But then things picked up substantially for second quarter, third quarter. We're looking at finishing out the year with everything flying every week. And that includes uh, the super mids up through the heavy jets and ultra long range. In brief, in Europe, we saw a huge uptick, um, uh, which interestingly coincided with the launch of Strategy over in Europe, uh, and I'd like to think they're connected, uh, but we certainly saw a very, very successful summer over there. In the US, things are remaining quite stagnant, and we're seeing um, a lot more play now from operators towards efficiency. And I think um, that is going to be probably the story of 2017, uh, and, and perhaps by Q4 as well, we'll start to see that, that business models are changing, a lot more operators are prepared to do what's called one-way pricing, uh, as opposed to round-trip pricing. Uh, and that's helping to bring the price down. And they're only able to do that because with technology um, uh, from various companies, um, like think again, Strasser has at the top of that list, we're now able to uh, have much more chance of finding a customer to take that return. With lower prices comes greater customers. With more customers, um, obviously, it ends up being more profit margin. So my guess would be Q4, we'll probably see uh, continued stagnation in, in the US. We'll probably see about the same going on in Europe, perhaps a slight uptick. 2017, I think, will be the key year. I think it's sort of indifferent. It's election year. Typically, uh, in my experience, election years have typically been flat. Uh, my personal experience is we're, we're up, uh, and it's been a pretty good, good year. We're seeing a lot of activity for the fourth quarter, so I think the fourth quarter will be, uh, will be better, and I'm optimistic about the future. Our maintenance business is up substantially this year and it's partly due to uh, a lot of heavy maintenance that we've done uh, uh, more expensive maintenance uh, the charter business is we're doing some new things with our challenger 850 so we're seeing pretty good increases there and our sales business is pretty much flat pretty much as last year it's definitely indifferent um, we've seen a trend summers are normally slow in the U.S., I mean, July, August are normally the dog days of summer, as we call them. There has been some European travel that's been a little bit different, which has been good, but not enough to make up the difference of, uh, of coming into September. It definitely feels slower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have thought about what do we attribute it to an election year. Um, 26 years in this business, that is something that has happened previously, but it feels a little stranger than that, I have to say. And I also think the supply and the demand is off kilter right now. I think there's much more supply and less demand. I think there's many people popping up with companies that are doing one ways, um, floating their fleet more. 
Well, we're kind of a unique company in that what we do is, um, is, uh, is not de so much dependent on new aircraft deliveries and things like that. It's really about uh, the culture of safety that that flight department has. And um, in looking at it positively, we're seeing a lot of flight departments uh, coming out and asking for this type of training, which is indicative of their budgets. So they're getting more money to do this, uh, and they're getting approval from their executives to come out here and to spend the money to, to become better. So um, uh, while I think that 2016 is probably going to look better than 2015 for new aircraft deliveries and flying, uh, we're not so much dependent on that. They don't need the training, they do it because it's the right thing to do. So there's a positive force you know, in business aviation and that's it and that keeps us running. I think business aviation is going through some big changes at the moment, but I think directionally we're headed in the right direction at this point. I think things are actually going to be growing um, and, and moving past stability in the near future. And I'd like to see it start with the fourth quarter. I can tell you from Meridian's perspective that things are looking up for us. Uh, we are actually adding planes to our charter fleet and uh, we are also expanding uh, from one FBO on the East Coast to two FBOs, adding a second one in Hayward, California at Hayward Executive Airport. Uh, I think 2017, uh, the economists are proje projecting growth, so uh, I, I would see that the business aviation community would be an extension of that, and uh, in fact, probably leading that curve. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, I think we'll be in, in good shape for the, the future. So there you have it. You don't have an accurate picture of the business aviation market until you speak to people right there in the front lines, watching supply and demand fluctuating day by day.